The Werewolf Apocalypse Unleashed. The Curse of the Ancient Tomb. In the heart of Eastern Europe lies the Carpathian Mountains, a region shrouded in mystery and ancient lore. It was here, deep within an untouched part of the forest, that Dr. Michael Hartman, an esteemed archaeologist known for his daring excavations, led his team on an unprecedented expedition. For years, rumors had circulated among the locals about a hidden tomb, one that held secrets so dark that even the bravest dared not venture near. The expedition had been months in the making. Dr. Hartman, along with his colleagues Dr. Emily Carter, a specialist in ancient languages, and Dr. Jack Reynolds, a renowned anthropologist, had meticulously planned their journey. They were accompanied by a group of skilled assistants and local guides who knew the treacherous terrain like the back of their hands. Their goal was to uncover a piece of history that had been buried for centuries. The journey to the site was arduous. Thick foliage and uneven ground made progress slow, but the team pressed on, driven by the promise of discovery. Local guides spoke in hushed tones about the area they were approaching, recounting tales of strange occurrences and eerie howls that filled the night. These stories, passed down through generations, only fueled the team's determination. They believed they were on the brink of a monumental find. After days of trekking, the team arrived at a clearing where the dense forest gave way to a rocky outcrop. There, partially hidden by overgrown vines and moss, they found what they had been searching for. A large, weathered stone entrance, almost completely obscured by nature's relentless march. The entrance was flanked by towering stone pillars, each etched with cryptic symbols and ancient warnings. Dr. Carter immediately set to work, her eyes gleaming with the thrill of deciphering the unknown. As Dr. Carter carefully brushed away the dirt and debris, she revealed a series of inscriptions in a language long forgotten. Her eyes widened in recognition and alarm as she read the ominous warnings. Beware those who enter, for the curse of the beast lies within, she translated aloud. Dr. Hartman and Dr. Reynolds exchanged uneasy glances but dismissed their fears. They had come too far to turn back now. The team worked tirelessly to clear the entrance using a combination of modern tools and age-old techniques. As they pried open the heavy stone door, a rush of cold, stale air greeted them. The atmosphere grew tense, a mix of excitement and apprehension. Inside, a dark, narrow passage led into the depths of the tomb. Flashlights flickered to life, casting long shadows on the walls adorned with intricate carvings depicting fearsome creatures and scenes of chaos. Dr. Hartman led the way his heart pounding with anticipation. The passage twisted and turned, revealing more carvings and artifacts along the way. Each step deeper into the tomb seemed to amplify the sense of dread that hung in the air. Finally, they reached the central chamber, a vast room with a high, domed ceiling. At the center stood a large sarcophagus, covered in centuries of dust and surrounded by offerings from a bygone era. The inscriptions on the sarcophagus were even more elaborate and detailed, warning of dire consequences for those who disturbed the tomb. Dr. Carter's hands trembled slightly as she translated the final warning. To open this tomb is to unleash the beast. Beware the curse that binds him. The team gathered around, their faces illuminated by the soft glow of their flashlights. They knew they were standing on the brink of an extraordinary discovery, one that could rewrite history. Despite the foreboding inscriptions, the decision was made to open the sarcophagus. The promise of uncovering ancient secrets was too great to resist. With a collective effort, they slowly lifted the heavy stone lid, revealing the contents within. The air grew colder, and a sense of unease settled over them. Inside, they found the mummified remains of a warrior, clad in armor and clutching a strange, intricately designed amulet. As Dr. Hartman carefully examined the amulet, he couldn't shake the feeling that they had just crossed a line one that should never have been crossed. The ancient curse, once a mere myth, now seemed all too real. The team members exchanged uneasy glances, aware that their discovery had set something in motion, something that would soon reveal itself in ways they could never have imagined. The tomb's atmosphere grew increasingly oppressive as the team continued their examination of the mummified warrior and the strange amulet. Dr. Hartman held the amulet up to the light, its intricate designs casting eerie shadows on the tomb walls. The amulet seemed to pulse with a life of its own, a faint glow emanating from its center. 
Dr. Carter and Dr. Reynolds watched intently, their curiosity mingling with a growing sense of dread. Michael, are you sure we should be handling that? Dr. Carter asked, her voice tinged with concern. The inscriptions were clear about a curse. Dr. Hartman nodded, his expression serious but determined. Emily, we've come too far to stop now. This amulet could hold the key to understanding this entire civilization. We need to document everything. As they meticulously recorded their findings, a low, rumbling sound echoed through the tomb. The ground beneath their feet trembled, causing loose stones and dust to fall from the ceiling. The team members exchanged worried glances, their unease growing with each passing moment. Outside, the sky darkened unnaturally, as if a storm were brewing. Suddenly, the amulet's glow intensified, casting an eerie light that bathed the entire chamber. The mummified warrior's eyes, once closed in eternal slumber, flickered open. The team gasped in unison, stepping back in shock. The air grew colder, and an otherworldly presence seemed to fill the tomb. The ancient curse had been awakened. Without warning, a deafening roar reverberated through the chamber. The walls seemed to pulse with energy, and the ground shook violently. The mummified warrior began to rise, its movements slow and deliberate. The team watched in horror as the once lifeless figure stood before them, a fearsome sight to behold. The warrior's eyes, glowing with an unnatural light, locked onto the team. It let out another earth-shattering roar, and the tomb's carvings seemed to come to life, depicting scenes of monstrous creatures and chaotic destruction. Dr. Hartman realized with a sinking feeling that they had unleashed something far more dangerous than they could have ever imagined. Everyone, get out of here now, Dr. Hartman shouted, his voice barely audible over the cacophony. The team scrambled to gather their equipment and flee the tomb. The ground continued to shake, and the air grew colder with each passing second. As they reached the entrance, they looked back to see the warrior stepping out of the sarcophagus, its eyes fixed on them with an unwavering intensity. Outside, the storm raged, the sky dark and foreboding. The team barely made it out of the tomb before a massive stone slab crashed down, sealing the entrance behind them. They stood there, panting and shaken, the reality of what they had just experienced slowly sinking in. We need to get back to camp and figure out what just happened, Dr. Reynolds said, his voice steady but filled with urgency. This isn't over. As they made their way back to their base camp, the forest seemed to close in around them. Strange howls echoed through the trees, sending shivers down their spines. The local guides, who had heard the stories of the cursed tomb, muttered prayers under their breath, their fear palpable. Back at camp, the team gathered around the fire, their faces illuminated by the flickering flames. Dr. Hartman held the amulet tightly, his mind racing with questions and fears. What had they unleashed? And how could they stop it? Dr. Carter pored over her notes, trying to decipher any additional clues from the tomb's inscriptions. There has to be something we missed, she muttered, frustration evident in her voice. Some way to reverse the curse. As night fell, the howls grew louder, and the team realized that they were not alone. Shadows moved at the edge of the camp, and the air grew thick with an unsettling presence. They knew that whatever they had unleashed was coming for them, and they had to find a way to stop it before it was too late. The night was thick with tension, the air heavy with an impending sense of doom. The fire crackled and popped, the only sound breaking the silence as the team huddled together, their faces illuminated by the flickering light. Dr. Carter poured over her notes, frustration evident in every line of her face. There has to be something we're missing, she muttered, tracing her finger over the sketches of the tomb's carvings. A clue, a key, anything that can help us understand this curse. Dr. Reynolds, ever the skeptic, shook his head. Emily, we've been through those notes a hundred times. The inscriptions were clear. Opening the tomb released the curse. We need to focus on what we're going to do now. Before anyone could respond, a blood-curdling howl pierced the night, freezing everyone in their tracks. It was a sound unlike any they had heard before, primal, guttural, and filled with a terrifying rage. The local guides exchanged fearful glances, their muttered prayers growing more fervent. That doesn't sound like any animal I've ever heard, one of the assistants said, his voice trembling. 
What do we do, Dr. Hartman? Dr. Hartman looked around at his team, their fear mirrored in his own eyes. We stay together, he said firmly. No one goes anywhere alone. We need to figure out what we're dealing with. Suddenly, another howl erupted, this time much closer. The underbrush rustled, and shadows seemed to move just beyond the reach of the firelight. The team members huddled closer, their eyes darting nervously around the perimeter of the camp. Then, from the darkness, something emerged. At first, it was just a shadow, but as it stepped into the light, the team gasped in horror. It was a creature unlike any they had seen, a monstrous figure standing on two legs, covered in coarse fur, with glowing eyes and razor-sharp claws. Its maw, filled with deadly fangs, dripped with saliva as it snarled, locking eyes with the group. The creature lunged, moving with a speed that defied its size. Chaos erupted as the team scattered, trying to avoid the beast's deadly swipes. One of the local guides wasn't fast enough, and the creature's claws slashed through the air, catching him across the chest. He fell to the ground with a scream, blood pouring from his wounds. Get to the tents! Grab anything you can use as a weapon! Dr. Hartman shouted, his voice barely audible over the sounds of the attack. The team scrambled to follow his orders, grabbing tools, sticks, and anything else that might help defend against the monstrous attacker. Dr. Carter, shaking with fear, clutched her flashlight like a lifeline. She saw Dr. Reynolds struggling with the creature, trying to fend it off with a makeshift spear. Jack, watch out, she screamed, but it was too late. The beast knocked him to the ground, its jaws snapping inches from his face. Dr. Hartman, driven by desperation, grabbed a burning log from the fire and swung it at the creature. The flames licked at its fur, causing it to recoil with a furious snarl. For a moment, it seemed like they might have a chance to escape. But then, as if summoned by the first creature's howls, more shadows emerged from the forest. We can't fight them all, Dr. Reynolds gasped, pulling himself to his feet. We need to get out of here. With no other options, the team fled into the forest, the howls of the creatures echoing behind them. They ran through the darkness, branches whipping at their faces, their breath coming in ragged gasps. The forest seemed alive with danger, every shadow hiding a potential threat. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, they stumbled into a small clearing. Panting and exhausted, they collapsed to the ground, trying to catch their breath. The howls had faded, but the sense of dread lingered. What the hell were those things? One of the assistants asked, his voice shaking. Werewolves? Dr. Hartman nodded grimly. It seems the curse was more than just a myth. We've unleashed something ancient and deadly. We need to find a way to stop it before it's too late. Dr. Carter looked at the amulet in Dr. Hartman's hand, her eyes filled with a mixture of fear and determination. There has to be a way to reverse the curse. We just need to find it. As the team gathered their strength and prepared to move on, they knew they were in a race against time. The ancient curse they had awakened was spreading and the fate of humanity now rested on their shoulders. The sun had just begun to rise, casting a pale light over the forest as the team gathered their bearings. The events of the previous night had left them shaken, but they knew they couldn't afford to lose hope. Dr. Hartman stood at the edge of the clearing, the amulet clutched tightly in his hand. Its strange, pulsating glow seemed to grow stronger with the dawn. We need to find shelter and regroup, he said his voice steady but urgent. There has to be something in the nearby villages that can help us understand this curse. We need information, old texts, local legends, anything that might give us a clue. The team agreed, and they set off in the direction of the nearest village, their pace quickened by the knowledge that they were being hunted. The forest, once a place of curiosity and wonder, now seemed hostile and foreboding. Every rustle of leaves, every distant howl, sent chills down their spines. After several hours of arduous trekking, they finally emerged from the dense forest into a small, secluded village. The villagers, initially wary of the strangers, soon recognized the urgency and fear in the team's eyes. They gathered around, whispering among themselves and casting anxious glances towards the dark line of trees. Dr. Hartman approached an elderly woman who seemed to hold a place of respect among the villagers. She eyed the amulet in his hand with a mixture of awe and dread. We are archaeologists, 
Dr. Hartman began, choosing his words carefully. We discovered an ancient tomb in the forest, and... We may have unleashed something terrible. Do you know anything about a curse involving werewolves? The woman, her face lined with age and wisdom, nodded slowly. The legend of the beast has been passed down through generations, she said, her voice heavy with gravitas. It is said that a powerful warrior was cursed for his atrocities, bound in the tomb to prevent his evil from spreading. The amulet you hold is the key to his imprisonment. By disturbing his rest, you have released his wrath upon the world. Dr. Carter stepped forward, her expression one of desperate hope. Is there a way to reverse the curse? To stop the werewolves? The woman sighed, her eyes filled with sorrow. The only way to reverse the curse is to return the warrior's spirit to the tomb and seal it once more with the amulet. But the process is fraught with danger. The spirits of the cursed will fight to prevent their imprisonment. As the team absorbed this information, they realized the enormity of their task. Not only did they have to survive the relentless attacks of the werewolves, but they also had to find a way to lure the warrior's spirit back to the tomb and seal it forever. Do you have any old texts or artifacts that might help us? Dr. Reynolds asked, his tone urgent. Anything that can give us more information on how to perform this ritual? The woman nodded and gestured for them to follow her. She led them to a small hut on the outskirts of the village, where she retrieved a dusty, leather-bound book and several ancient scrolls. These have been passed down through my family for generations, she explained. They contain the history of the curse and instructions for the ritual. Use them wisely. Grateful for the assistance, the team set up a makeshift camp in the village, poring over the texts late into the night. Dr. Carter and Dr. Reynolds worked tirelessly to translate the old language, uncovering details of the curse and the steps needed to reverse it. The ritual was complex, requiring specific elements and precise timing. They would need to gather rare herbs, perform incantations, and confront the werewolves in their most vulnerable state. As they studied, the howls of the creatures echoed in the distance, a constant reminder of the urgency of their mission. The villagers, now aware of the danger, fortified their homes and prepared for the worst. Despite the fear and uncertainty, a sense of determination began to take hold. They would not be helpless victims. They would fight to protect their homes and loved ones. Dr. Hartman, meanwhile, focused on the amulet, trying to understand its power. He knew that it was both the source of the curse and the key to its reversal. But how to wield it effectively remained a mystery. He could feel the weight of responsibility pressing down on him. The fate of not just his team, but potentially all of humanity, rested in their hands. As dawn broke once again, the team gathered to finalize their plan. They had identified the elements needed for the ritual and mapped out the steps they would need to take. The first task was to locate and gather the rare herbs mentioned in the texts. These herbs were said to grow in the heart of the forest, near the tomb itself, a perilous journey, but one they had no choice but to undertake. Dr. Hartman addressed the group, his voice resolute. We have a plan, and we have the knowledge. Now we need to act, stick together, stay vigilant, and trust in our abilities. We will find a way to end this curse. With renewed determination, the team set off once more into the forest, each step bringing them closer to their ultimate confrontation with the ancient evil they had unleashed. The path ahead was fraught with danger, but they knew that failure was not an option. The fate of the world depended on their success. The team ventured deeper into the heart of the forest, their senses on high alert. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig sent their hearts racing. They knew the rare herbs they needed for the ritual grew near the tomb itself, a place they had hoped never to see again. But necessity drove them forward. Dr. Carter had compiled a detailed list of the herbs required, each with a specific purpose in the ritual to reverse the curse. The texts were clear. These herbs held potent magical properties that could bind the werewolf spirits and return them to their eternal rest. However, they were rare and difficult to find, requiring a keen eye and knowledge of ancient botany. As they trekked through the dense underbrush, Dr. Hartman kept the amulet close, feeling its weight both physically and metaphorically. The team moved cautiously, their makeshift weapons ready. The forest seemed to close in around them, its dark secrets hidden in the shadows. 
After hours of searching, Dr. Carter's face lit up as she spotted the first herb, a small, delicate plant with deep purple flowers. Lunar blossom, she whispered, carefully harvesting it. This is one of the key ingredients. We're on the right track. Encouraged by their find, the team pressed on. They moved methodically, each member scanning the forest floor for the herbs. The tension was palpable, but their determination was unwavering. They found moonshade root growing near a moss-covered rock, its silvery leaves glistening in the dim light. Bloodvine was discovered entwined around an ancient oak, its crimson tendrils creeping up the bark. Just as they were beginning to feel hopeful, a low growl emanated from the shadows. The team froze, their eyes darting around, searching for the source of the sound. The forest had gone eerily silent, the only noise the rapid beating of their hearts. Suddenly, from the darkness, a pair of glowing eyes appeared, followed by another, and then another. The werewolves had found them. The team formed a defensive circle, their weapons raised, knowing that their survival depended on their ability to fend off these creatures. Dr. Reynolds, gripping a spear fashioned from a sturdy branch, called out, Stay together! Don't let them separate us! The werewolves advanced, their growls growing louder, their forms emerging fully from the shadows. They were even more terrifying up close, their fur bristling, claws gleaming in the faint light. The first werewolf lunged, but Dr. Hartman was ready. He swung his makeshift torch, the flame scorching the creature's fur and forcing it back with a pained snarl. Another werewolf attacked from the side, and Dr. Reynolds thrust his spear, narrowly missing its head but driving it away. Despite their fear, the team fought with a fierce determination. They knew that retreat was not an option. They had to stand their ground. Dr. Carter, with no weapon, used the amulet, thrusting it forward as a werewolf charged at her. To her astonishment, the creature recoiled, its eyes wide with fear. The amulet's power was undeniable. The skirmish was intense, but the team managed to hold their ground. The werewolves, sensing the strength and resolve of their prey, eventually retreated into the forest, their howls echoing in the distance. The team was battered and bruised, but alive. Breathing heavily, Dr. Hartman looked around at his exhausted team. Is everyone okay? He asked, concern etched on his face. Dr. Carter nodded, though she was visibly shaken. We're okay. But we need to keep moving. We have the herbs. Now we need to get back to the village and prepare for the ritual. With the werewolves momentarily driven back, the team quickly gathered the remaining herbs and made their way back through the forest. The journey was grueling, each step fraught with the knowledge that they could be attacked at any moment, but they pressed on, driven by the urgency of their mission. When they finally emerged from the forest and saw the village in the distance, a collective sigh of relief passed through the group. They had survived the first major hurdle, but they knew the hardest part was yet to come. The ritual required precise execution, and any mistake could mean the difference between success and catastrophe. As they approached the village, the villagers greeted them with a mixture of relief and trepidation. They could see the weariness in the team's eyes and the determination that drove them forward. The elders prepared a space in the center of the village for the ritual, gathering materials and offering their support. Dr. Hartman, Dr. Carter, and Dr. Reynolds gathered around the fire, their faces lit by the warm glow. They reviewed the steps of the ritual, ensuring they understood every detail. The herbs were carefully prepared, each one placed in a specific arrangement as dictated by the ancient texts. We have everything we need, Dr. Carter said, her voice steady despite the fear in her eyes. Now we just need to wait for the right moment. The ritual required the light of the full moon, which would rise that night. The team knew that time was running out. As darkness fell and the moon began to rise, they steeled themselves for the task ahead. The werewolves would not give up easily, and the final battle was looming on the horizon. The night was still, the air heavy with anticipation. The full moon hung low in the sky, casting a pale, ethereal light over the village. The team gathered in the center of the clearing, their makeshift weapons close at hand, the herbs carefully arranged around the central fire. The villagers, both fearful and hopeful, watched from the shadows, 
their prayers a constant murmur in the background. Dr. Carter took a deep breath, her hands steady as she prepared the final elements of the ritual. We have to be precise, she reminded the team. Any mistake could make things worse. Let's stay focused. Dr. Hartman held the amulet tightly, its glow matching the intensity of the moonlight. He knew the power it held, and the responsibility that came with it. Emily, you guide us through the ritual. Jack and I will handle the protection. Everyone else, stay alert. Dr. Reynolds nodded, his grip firm on his spear. We won't let them get close. Just do what you need to do. The fire crackled as Dr. Carter began the incantation, her voice rising and falling with the ancient words. The herbs, placed in precise patterns around the fire, began to smolder, releasing fragrant smoke that swirled into the night air. The amulet in Dr. Hartman's hand seemed to respond, its glow pulsing in time with the rhythm of the incantation. As the ritual progressed, the air grew colder, a chill that seemed to seep into their very bones. The villagers' murmurs grew louder, their fear palpable. Then, from the darkness beyond the village, the first howls began. The werewolves were coming. Dr. Reynolds and the assistants took their positions, forming a defensive circle around Dr. Carter and the ritual site. The howls grew closer, more frenzied. Shadows moved at the edge of the firelight, the werewolves' eyes glowing with a predatory hunger. Dr. Carter's voice never wavered, even as the first werewolf lunged from the darkness. Dr. Hartman swung a burning log, the flames driving the creature back with a snarling hiss. Another werewolf attacked from the side, but Dr. Reynolds was ready, his spear finding its mark and sending the beast sprawling. The ritual reached a fever pitch, the smoke from the herbs thickening, creating a barrier of sorts around the fire. Dr. Carter's chanting grew louder, the amulet's glow now blinding. The werewolves, driven by an ancient rage, pressed their attack, but the team held firm, their determination unyielding. Suddenly the amulet emitted a brilliant flash of light, and the ground beneath them trembled. The werewolves recoiled, howling in pain and fury. The villagers watched in awe and terror as the light enveloped the clearing, casting long shadows that danced wildly. Dr. Hartman felt a surge of energy course through him, the amulet's power merging with the ritual's magic. He raised the amulet high, its light piercing the darkness. The werewolves, now fully visible, were caught in its beam, their forms twisting and contorting. The lead werewolf, the ancient warrior they had unleashed, stepped forward, its eyes locked on the amulet. It roared, a sound filled with rage and defiance. Dr. Hartman steeled himself, knowing that this was the moment of truth. Now, Emily! He shouted, his voice barely audible over the din. Dr. Carter's chant reached its climax, the final words echoing into the night. The amulet's light intensified, and the werewolves howled in unison, their bodies writhing in agony. The ground shook violently, and a powerful gust of wind swept through the clearing, extinguishing the fire and plunging the village into darkness. The light from the amulet remained, a beacon in the night. The werewolves, caught in its glow, began to disintegrate, their forms dissolving into shadows. The ancient warrior let out one final agonized roar before collapsing to the ground, its body crumbling into dust. The remaining werewolves followed suit, their howls fading into the night as their forms dissipated. As the light from the amulet dimmed, a profound silence fell over the village. The team, exhausted and battered, looked around in disbelief. The werewolves were gone, their curse lifted. The villagers emerged from the shadows, their faces filled with awe and gratitude. Dr. Hartman lowered the amulet, its glow now a faint shimmer. We did it, he said, his voice barely more than a whisper. The curse is broken. Dr. Carter, tears of relief streaming down her face, nodded. We couldn't have done it without everyone's help. We survived. Dr. Reynolds, leaning on his spear, smiled wearily. And we're still standing. That's what matters. The villagers, now free from the terror that had haunted them for generations, began to cheer, their voices rising in a joyous chorus. The team, despite their exhaustion, joined in the celebration, knowing that their ordeal had finally come to an end.
The dawn brought a sense of calm to the village, but the team knew their journey was far from over. The werewolves had been defeated, but the mystery of the ancient tomb and its curse still lingered. As the first rays of sunlight bathed the village in a warm glow, the team gathered to reflect on their experiences and plan their next steps. Dr. Hartman, still clutching the now dim amulet, addressed the group. We've broken the curse and driven back the werewolves, but we need to understand the origins of this curse to ensure it doesn't happen again. The answers lie in the tomb and the ancient texts we found. Dr. Carter nodded in agreement, her face showing the weariness of the recent battle, but also a spark of determination. We need to decipher the rest of the inscriptions in the tomb. There might be more information about the origin of the curse and how it can be permanently sealed. The team decided to return to the tomb, despite the lingering fear and apprehension. Armed with their newfound knowledge and the villagers' support, they felt a renewed sense of purpose. As they prepared for the journey, the villagers provided them with provisions and heartfelt thanks, their gratitude evident in their eyes. The trek back to the tomb was filled with a mix of anticipation and dread. The forest, now bathed in daylight, seemed less foreboding, but the memory of the werewolves still haunted their minds. As they approached the tomb, the air grew colder, and a sense of unease settled over the group. Entering the tomb, they lit torches to illuminate the dark, narrow passages. The walls, covered in ancient inscriptions and carvings, seemed to whisper secrets of the past. Dr. Carter carefully examined the texts, her fingers tracing the intricate patterns and symbols. These inscriptions tell the story of an ancient civilization that worshipped a powerful deity, she began. The deity granted them protection and strength, but it came at a cost. They had to perform rituals and sacrifices to keep the deity appeased. Over time, the rituals grew darker, involving blood magic and forbidden practices. Dr. Reynolds, listening intently, added, So the curse we encountered was a result of these dark rituals. The werewolves were once guardians, transformed by the blood magic to serve as protectors of the tomb and its secrets. Dr. Carter nodded, her eyes wide with realization. The curse was a punishment for those who disturbed the tomb and tried to uncover its secrets. The amulet we found was created to contain the power of the deity and control the werewolves, but it was never meant to be used lightly. As they delved deeper into the tomb, they discovered a hidden chamber. Inside, they found a massive stone tablet covered in ancient script and symbols. Dr. Hartman and Dr. Carter worked together to translate the text, their excitement growing with each new revelation. The tablet contains a prophecy, Dr. Carter explained. It speaks of a time when the curse would be broken and the werewolves would be released, but it also mentions a way to permanently seal the curse and prevent it from ever being unleashed again. Dr. Hartman, his eyes fixed on the tablet, read aloud, To seal the curse, one must return the amulet to its rightful place, perform the final ritual, and offer a pure sacrifice. Only then will the curse be contained for eternity. The team exchanged glances, the weight of the prophecy sinking in. They had the amulet and the knowledge of the ritual but the mention of a pure sacrifice left them uneasy. Dr. Reynolds broke the silence, his voice filled with resolve. We've come this far. We can't turn back now. We need to finish what we started. With a sense of determination, the team prepared to perform the final ritual. They knew the risks, but they also understood the importance of ensuring the curse would never be unleashed again. The fate of the world depended on their success. As night fell, the team gathered in the hidden chamber, the stone tablet and the amulet placed at the center. The air was thick with tension and anticipation. Dr. Carter, with the translated texts in hand, began to outline the steps of the final ritual. We need to align the amulet with the symbols on the tablet and recite the incantation, she explained. The pure sacrifice mentioned in the prophecy is not a life, but a symbol of purity and innocence. It's a representation of our intentions to end the curse. Dr. Hartman nodded, holding the amulet carefully. We must proceed with utmost precision. Any mistake could undo everything we've accomplished. The team arranged the symbols around the tablet, placing the amulet in the center. 
The atmosphere grew heavy, the ancient magic in the air palpable. Dr. Carter began the incantation, her voice steady and clear, echoing through the chamber. As the ritual progressed, the amulet started to glow once more, its light intensifying with each word spoken. The symbols on the tablet responded, emitting a faint, eerie luminescence. The ground trembled slightly, the power of the ritual building to a crescendo. Suddenly, a cold wind swept through the chamber, extinguishing the torches and plunging the room into darkness. The amulet's light was the only source of illumination, casting long shadows on the walls. The team held their breath, their hearts pounding in their chests. Dr. Carter continued the incantation, her voice unwavering despite the fear gripping her heart. The light from the amulet grew blinding, and a deep, resonant hum filled the chamber. The ancient power within the amulet and the tablet was awakening. The pure sacrifice, represented by a small, intricately carved figure of a child, was placed in front of the amulet. The figure, made of pure white stone, symbolized innocence and purity. Dr. Hartman gently placed it at the center of the ritual, completing the final step. As the last words of the incantation were spoken, a blinding flash of light erupted from the amulet, enveloping the entire chamber. The team shielded their eyes, feeling a surge of energy wash over them. The ground shook violently, and the air was filled with a deafening roar. When the light finally subsided, the chamber was silent. The amulet lay on the ground, its glow now completely extinguished. The stone tablet had cracked, the symbols fading away. The ritual had worked. The curse was sealed. Dr. Carter, her voice filled with relief, whispered, It's over. We've done it. Dr. Hartman picked up the amulet, now an ordinary piece of metal. The curse is contained. The werewolves won't return. The team, exhausted but triumphant, made their way out of the tomb. The forest, bathed in the soft light of dawn, felt different, peaceful, and serene. They had faced unimaginable horrors and emerged victorious, their bond stronger than ever. As they returned to the village, the villagers greeted them with tears of joy and gratitude. The nightmare that had haunted them for generations was finally over. The team knew that their journey had changed them forever, but they were ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. For now, they allowed themselves to rest, knowing they had accomplished something extraordinary. The ancient curse was sealed, and the world was safe once more. The village was alive with celebration as the team returned, their arrival met with cheers and joyous relief. The curse had been broken, and the people of the village could finally live without fear. The villagers organized a grand feast in honor of the team, their gratitude palpable in every smile and gesture. Dr. Hartman, Dr. Carter, and Dr. Reynolds sat at the head of the table, their exhaustion momentarily forgotten amidst the festive atmosphere. The villagers prepared a feast of local delicacies, their joy evident in the vibrant colors of the dishes and the lively music that filled the air. As they ate, Dr. Hartman looked around at the faces of the villagers, feeling a deep sense of accomplishment. We've achieved something incredible, he said, raising his glass in a toast. Not just for ourselves, but for everyone here. We freed this land from a terrible curse. Dr. Carter, her gaze softening, added, We couldn't have done it without the support of the villagers. Their courage and resilience were a big part of our success. Dr. Reynolds, smiling wearily, agreed, And let's not forget the lessons we've learned. There's always more to discover and more to understand. But for now, we can take pride in what we've accomplished. As the night wore on, the villagers shared stories of their experiences, their fears, and their hopes for the future. The atmosphere was one of unity and healing, the scars of the past beginning to fade with each passing moment. The team, though tired, found solace in the knowledge that they had made a real difference. They had faced unimaginable challenges and come out stronger, their bonds of friendship and teamwork deepened by the trials they had endured. The morning after the celebration, the team gathered to prepare for their departure. The villagers had gifted them with tokens of appreciation, handcrafted items and mementos of their journey. 
Dr. Hartman carefully packed these treasures, his thoughts reflecting on the journey they had undertaken. Before they left, the village elder approached them with a solemn expression. You have given us more than just safety, the elder said. You have given us hope and a future free from fear. We will remember your bravery and sacrifice. The team thanked the elder, their hearts full of gratitude. As they walked away from the village, the forest seemed to welcome them back, its shadows no longer menacing but peaceful. They had returned to the world they knew, but they had changed in ways they could not yet fully understand. Back in their respective homes and laboratories, the team reflected on their extraordinary adventure. The experience had left an indelible mark on each of them, shaping their perspectives and strengthening their resolve to continue their work. Dr. Hartman resumed his research with a renewed sense of purpose. He delved into the study of ancient curses and rituals, eager to apply the knowledge gained from their recent ordeal. The amulet, now a mere artifact, was preserved as a reminder of the power and responsibility they had encountered. Dr. Carter, inspired by the journey, began to work on a new project focused on ancient magic and its applications in modern science. Her experiences had deepened her understanding of the connections between history, mythology, and science, leading her to explore new avenues of research. Dr. Reynolds returned to his fieldwork with a greater appreciation for the unknown. The challenges he faced during the adventure had strengthened his resolve to confront new mysteries and uncover hidden truths. He continued to work as a field archaeologist, his experiences providing valuable insights into the artifacts and legends he studied. As they each pursued their paths, they stayed in touch, sharing updates and stories from their respective journeys. The bond they formed during their adventure remained strong, a testament to their shared experiences and the trials they had overcome. Years later, the story of their adventure became a legend in its own right, inspiring others to explore the unknown and confront their fears. The village, now thriving and free from the shadow of the curse, became a symbol of hope and resilience. The mystery of the ancient tomb and the curse that had been broken remained a powerful reminder of the challenges they faced and the triumphs they achieved. The team had faced darkness and emerged victorious, their journey a testament to the strength of the human spirit and the power of courage and teamwork. As they looked back on their adventure, they knew that their lives had been forever changed. They had faced the unknown and emerged stronger, their experiences shaping their future endeavors and their understanding of the world. The legacy of their journey continued to inspire and resonate, a reminder of the enduring quest for knowledge and the unbreakable bond of friendship. In the weeks following the sealing of the ancient curse, the team returned to their respective lives. But the echoes of their adventure lingered in their minds. Dr. Hartman, now back in his research lab, found himself haunted by fragments of the ancient texts and symbols. The knowledge they had gained seemed to permeate every aspect of his work, influencing his research on ancient civilizations and their mystical practices. Dr. Carter dedicated herself to unraveling more about the ancient deity they had encountered. Her days were filled with analyzing artifacts and revisiting the inscriptions they had deciphered. The deeper she delved into the mysteries, the more she realized that their journey had uncovered only a fraction of the tomb's secrets. There were connections to other lost civilizations and hidden rituals that suggested a far-reaching network of ancient powers. Dr. Reynolds resumed his fieldwork, but carried the weight of their experience with him. Each artifact he encountered seemed to whisper of ancient curses and forgotten legends. His perspective on archaeology had shifted, and he approached each discovery with a newfound respect for the power and mystery of the past. Despite their separate paths, the team stayed in touch, sharing their findings and insights. Their communications often turned into late-night discussions about the implications of their discovery. They knew that their adventure had opened a door to a broader realm of ancient mysteries that extended beyond the werewolf curse they had faced. One evening, Dr. Hartman received an unexpected visitor, the village elder, from their recent adventure. The Elder had traveled a long distance to deliver a message. The peace we now enjoy is fragile, the Elder said gravely. Other ancient curses may still lie dormant, waiting to be awakened. The Elder handed Dr. Hartman a small, intricately carved box. Inside, there was an ancient relic, 
an artifact that seemed to resonate with the same energy as the amulet they had used to break the curse. Dr. Hartman felt a chill as he realized that their adventure was far from over. The relic was a key to uncovering more about the ancient powers that had once controlled the curse. The team knew they had to reunite and investigate this new lead. The journey ahead promised new challenges and deeper revelations about the ancient world and its forgotten horrors. The team reconvened, their excitement palpable as they prepared for their next adventure. The relic they had received from the village elder was the focal point of their renewed quest. They planned a journey to explore ancient sites mentioned in the relic's inscriptions, hoping to uncover more about the ancient deity and the network of curses. Dr. Carter had spent days studying the relic and cross-referencing it with other ancient texts. She had identified several potential locations tied to the deity's worship, each promising to reveal more about the origins and influence of the curse. The team's new destination was a remote, uncharted region known for its mysterious ruins and legends of dark magic. As they set out on their journey, they were filled with a mixture of anticipation and apprehension. The previous adventure had left them with both physical and emotional scars, but they were driven by the promise of uncovering more about the ancient powers they had barely begun to understand. The trek through the dense, untamed wilderness was grueling. They navigated treacherous terrain, braved unpredictable weather, and faced numerous challenges along the way. Despite the difficulties, their bond was stronger than ever, forged in the fires of their previous encounter with the curse. After days of travel, they arrived at the site of the ancient ruins. The remnants of a long-lost civilization stood before them, their stone structures partially buried under centuries of vegetation. The air was thick with an oppressive silence broken only by the rustling of leaves and the distant call of wildlife. Dr. Carter led the exploration, using the relic as a guide to decipher the inscriptions and symbols carved into the ruins. The team carefully examined each artifact and structure, piecing together clues that would lead them to the heart of the ancient power. As they delved deeper into the ruins, they discovered hidden chambers and secret passages each revealing more about the dark history of the civilization that once inhabited the area. The relics seemed to pulse with energy, guiding them toward a central location where the true nature of the ancient deity's power was said to be revealed. The team reached the central chamber of the ruins, a vast, cavernous space illuminated by flickering torchlight. The chamber was adorned with intricate carvings and symbols that told the story of an ancient civilization's worship of a malevolent deity. In the center of the chamber stood a massive stone altar, covered in dust and cobwebs. Dr. Carter approached the altar, carefully studying the carvings. This altar was used for powerful rituals, she explained. The deity's power was channeled through sacrifices and dark magic. The inscriptions speak of a binding ritual that was performed to contain the deity's influence. Dr. Hartman examined the surrounding walls, noting the patterns and symbols that match those on the relic. We're on the right track, he said. The relic is a key to unlocking the secrets of this chamber. It's connected to the deity's power and the rituals performed here. As the team worked to decipher the inscriptions, they noticed a hidden compartment in the altar. Dr. Reynolds carefully pried it open, revealing a set of ancient scrolls and a mysterious glowing crystal. The scrolls contained detailed instructions for performing a ritual to either harness or contain the deity's power. Dr. Carter's eyes widened as she read the scrolls. This ritual is similar to the one we performed before, but it's more complex. It involves the use of the crystal to amplify the amulet's power and perform a final binding ceremony. The team realized that they had stumbled upon a crucial piece of the puzzle. The crystal was an essential component for sealing the deity's power and ensuring that it could never be unleashed again. However, the ritual was fraught with danger and required precise execution. As they prepared to perform the ritual, they felt a palpable sense of dread. The chamber seemed to come alive with ancient energy, the air crackling with tension. They set up the ritual according to the instructions, aligning the crystal with the symbols on the altar and preparing to recite the incantations. The atmosphere was charged with anticipation as they began the ritual. The crystal's light grew brighter, casting eerie shadows on the walls. 
The team's voices blended in harmony as they recited the incantations, their focus unwavering despite the growing intensity of the energy around them. As the ritual reached its climax, a blinding flash of light filled the chamber, and the ground trembled violently. The ancient power was being channeled and contained, the deity's influence weakening as the binding spell took effect. The chamber shook with the force of the magic, but the team remained steadfast in their resolve. When the light finally faded, the chamber was silent once more. The crystal's glow had dimmed, and the inscriptions on the altar had been sealed with a new protective symbol. The team knew that they had succeeded in their mission, but the experience had left them emotionally and physically drained. As they emerged from the ruins, they felt a profound sense of relief and accomplishment. They had faced the heart of darkness and prevailed, their bravery and determination ensuring that the ancient curse would remain contained. The journey had brought them closer together and deepened their understanding of the ancient world's mysteries. The team returned to their lives with a renewed sense of purpose, knowing that their adventure had made a lasting impact on their world and beyond. Months had passed since the team had successfully performed the ritual to contain the ancient deity's power. Each member had returned to their normal lives, but their experience had left an indelible mark on them. The ancient ruins they had explored became a legend in its own right, with local historians and adventurers intrigued by the mysterious events that had transpired. Dr. Hartman had returned to his research lab with a renewed passion. His work now focused on ancient curses and their implications for modern science. The data he had gathered from the tomb was invaluable and he was determined to use it to advance his understanding of ancient mystical practices. His research was met with increased interest from the academic community, and he began to collaborate with other experts in the field to unravel more about the hidden aspects of ancient magic. Dr. Carter's work continued to evolve as well. Her studies on ancient rituals and deities gained recognition, and she was invited to speak at conferences about her findings. The ancient relics and scrolls from their journey provided a wealth of information that deepened her knowledge and influenced her future research. Her lectures often included tales from their adventure, captivating audiences with stories of bravery and ancient power. Excited by the prospect of uncovering more about the tomb's secrets, Dr. Hartman contacted Dr. Carter and Dr. Reynolds, proposing a new expedition. They agreed that the quest for the second relic could provide answers to lingering questions and perhaps lead to further discoveries about the ancient civilization's mystical practices.